you know, we're into game week. Uh, obviously, as you guys know, one day at a time. And so, you know, we walked through today. <clears throat> a lot of times Monday are shorter practices, but, you know, we've grinded them pretty hard and wanted to have, them have two physical days off <clears throat> um, in a row after the mock game to make sure that we're getting our legs back before we go, you know, our normal Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday routine. You know, I would say in the mock game, you know, in general, I don't think we played great. I don't think that, you know, as much as we try to create a game day atmosphere and routine and get players to play really hard, um, sometimes this happens without a crowd. Um, you know, so I did not think we played great in all three phases by any means. Um, you know, actually, the other team played harder. And, you know, so we showed them that today. That's why you got to show up every game, no matter who you're playing. Um, because, you know, that was our service team, and the game was a lot closer than it should have been. And I'll beat you to your first question. So um, we still have not made a quarterback decision. I thought they both played OK. <clears throat> um, I would have thought, again, we would have performed better uh, in that situation against you know, the other team. And so we'll keep plugging away. I do not know when I'll have that answer. We haven't even discussed the timeline as coaches because um, it has not emerged um, at all. Coach, just now through another spring, another fall camp, heading into to week one of your third year here, just do you like where this, I guess, the team and program as a whole is heading or going in your, in your third year? <clears throat> yeah, you know, sometimes you reflect on things. Like you said, as you go into third year and the first year being strange with COVID, for everybody, we couldn't really recruit. Town was kind of shut down and, um, you know, win the Outback Bowl and last year to, you know, win all the home games and success and go to the Sugar Bowl uh, was really cool. So now it's a new year. You know, I kind of, you know, as I thought about that, I, <clears throat> I kind of thought, you know, maybe if you look at my background where I've been, you know, in different places that, you know, this statement may surprise you probably would have surprised me if I would have said it a long time ago. But, <clears throat> you know, I look at it as you go around town, there's so much excitement about the program, season ticket sales, everything. But I feel like I needed Oxford and Ole Miss a lot more than it needed me. And um, so I enjoy it here. Um, it's been awesome. And it's been really cool. Now we got to take off from last year and rebuild like we have and now go perform on game days and keep our home winning streak alive. I mean, I don't know the stats, but it's got to be one of the longer ones around. Lane, just with the quarterbacks, do you envision a scenario where both are playing on Saturday or are you going to go with one or the other when you do make that decision? I would certainly think we'd go with one or the other, um, but I'd, I don't know that for sure. Because again, we don't really do things that are set in stone no matter what. We're always looking at whatever's the best for the team. You said you needed Oxford and Ole Miss more than it needed you. Can you elaborate on that? What, it, what was it about it that turns out that you needed? I just think maybe that what statement might not surprise people. Um, just when I thought of it the other day, um, I don't know that I would have said that in the beginning, just from living in the different cities I've lived in and, um, you know, and as you guys know here with Landry moving here and juice and everything and just how people are here, it's, it's been really awesome for me. And, um, you know, it's been part of a lot of changes that have taken place personally. Uh, I think it just didn't happen in these two years by chance. I think a lot of it had to do with coming here. Lane, brand new staff at Troy, new coordinators. How have you prepared for them as a team? Yeah, that's difficult. Um, because you got to watch film from other teams, and that's always a problem in the opener when it's a staff from somewhere else because you're watching the film for scheme, but then you get lost in the players, and then you're like, you're not even playing these players. It's some other school. 
So that's always challenging. Um, I think, you know, I remind our coaches, you know, in games like this, it's more about making sure we perform really well, do things we're really good at. So regardless of what they do, because we don't know exactly what they will do, you know, our guys know what to do and aren't surprised. How does the confidence you have in this team compare to other teams you've coached here at Ole Miss? That's a hard question. Um, I mean, I think we just kind of went through like the first year being COVID, no spring, so really had no, hardly any idea. Um, second year, you know, a lot more confidence with a lot of guys returning, especially the quarterback, and knew the defense was going to be improved. And this one's a wild card because you just got so many new players. And just like I've told you, we go out to Friday and it's their first Friday with us. We go out Saturday and all of a sudden some guy wants to wear a different color shoelaces because that's what he did at another school. You know, well, we don't do that. You know, we have ways we do things here. And so it's just a, it's a constant, you know, coaching every day of these guys um, because everything's new. This is their first real Monday with us. So tomorrow will be their first real Tuesday and Saturday will be their first game. So. I, I don't know that confidence is the right word because there's so many wild cards, especially on defense. I think you kind of just answered my question. You said before the preseason started, before the fall camp started, about meshing the cultures in a short period of time because of all the new players. How's that process gone? Well, I think it was really good. And I thought they bought in. They did a good job when it came to meetings. Um, you know, understand how we do things. It's just everything's new because, again, they haven't gone to a game week, you know, and they hadn't done a mock game. And so I think where I was feeling better, then it's just a reminder. We go out to warm ups, and, you know, guys don't even know where to go to warm ups. You know, obviously we told them before, but until Saturday morning, don't know how we even warm up for a game. So it's just, it's very unusual because, again, normally in these things, you just have your high school kids coming in for the most part. and. They, they don't really play significant roles, 90% of them usually. And so, you know, they just kind of look and follow. Now we got guys starting that everything's first for them. Lane Troy's got <clears throat> disruptors, if you will, all over their defense. I mean, I know you've watched film on them. What are, what are some concerns that jump out to you? Well, I think the unknowns of exactly what scheme they're doing. Um, and these guys forever. Um, have had really good players, a lot of Alabama kids. Um, Hess liked that today when I told the team that this morning. Hey, Alabama kids are tough, man. You're going to see a lot of them. And so Hess got all excited even though he's not playing. So he said he appreciated that. Um, but, you know, I don't know what, what was it, three years ago or whatever when they beat LSU. You know, these guys have always had really good players that play really physical and have good length. and. Um, you know, we're always one of those teams you're not real excited about uh, uh, scheduling. Anyone else other than Hess that you have ruled out officially? Um, Breedlove um, would, would definitely be out for, for a while. And you would already know Jakevian Brown and Jaden Dix and Ray Fenson. A lot of the guys that you've been holding out throughout the fall, is that, are they close to 100% now? Was that more precaution stuff? Yeah, I think we'll know, today was a walkthrough. We'll know tomorrow. Um, you know, we anticipate, you know, the guys that have been hurt a little bit in camp um, all being able to play Saturday. Obviously, you guys lost some impact players off defense. You look at what Sam's doing in Dallas, and both of your linebackers look like they're going to make NFL teams. How's that come along in terms of not just replacing the bodies, but just that level of production and leadership that you got from those guys a year ago? Yeah, those guys <clears throat> were great players. And you know, you know, you look at our scores, and at the end of the year, we played really good defense. You know, and won a lot of games. Or, won a number of games there because of our defense at the end. We were not playing like we normally play on offense, and a lot had to do with the receiver injuries. And, you know, so uh, that, that does not surprise me. You know, I think that 
people probably point more to the offensive guys you lose just because it's a quarterback, but, you know, those are really good defensive players. And, um, you know, you watch Mark Robinson miss a half of the bowl game and then how he played in there. And there's a reason he got drafted, you know, coming from a walk-on running back just two years ago from, I think, Austin P or something. So um, Chance obviously was a special player all around. And Sam's really like our poster child. We preach to these guys about maturity and how to practice, how to play compared to how he was initially and, and how people can change, how kids can change. Obviously, Coach, this isn't your first season opener as a head coach, but you look at the last two years, having a 20% capacity crowd here against Florida, and then you missing last year's season opener because of COVID. I mean, is there, I know it's been a busy couple of weeks, but has it kind of crossed your mind in the slice that you finally get a normal season opener personally over the last two years? No. Um, I actually forgot I wasn't at the opener until you just said that. Because um, I was like, where are you going with this? <laughs> two years in a row. So. Um, you know, no, no, I've not, I've not thought about that. So we, we got so many, we just didn't play really well Saturday and it was very concerning. And so that has all our attention right now. Coach, any message to the fans or, and, and what kind of crowd are you expecting for the first game back? I, I, I don't know the numbers. Um, again, trying to get us to line up and score points and stop them. So uh, it'd be awesome you know, to have a great crowd and continue to, when he looks at the stats and figures out where we are in the home winning streaks in the country, continue that. It's always special to win at home. So, um, and the walk's awesome. It's one of the coolest traditions in college football. Um, so I look forward to that too. And like I told our new coaches, I said, this would be pretty cool for you. What do you know about Troy? Um, I know that, like I said, they got really good players. Um, you know, they got new staff with, you know, different people on it from different places. It's not like the whole staff came from somewhere. You can just watch that place. And so um, it's very challenging. And, you know, at times last year they played really competitive. And, like I said, I have always had good players. Coach, your concerns with not playing well, is it knowledge-based to some degree with all the new players from different systems and trying to, to catch on to what you want them to do? <clears throat> I think it was, which, which happens in this mock game, unfortunately, some years. You know, you've got players that have played a bunch, and especially these guys coming from other places, and no matter what we say, no matter what we create, they still know it's not a real game. And so and it shows up. Um, how they screw up plays in the openers um, and basic things on defense and special teams and don't play with great effort. So that part was frustrating. All right, thanks, guys. Thanks, Coach. Thank you.